How is it going everyone? Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So I wanted to give you a quick overview about how do you deal with nodes, stream, and buffer objects. And let me give you some background information. I've been using Node for a while. I work now to build out my REST APIs and I haven't really ran into a use case for using streams or buffers that often. Turns out that when you start dealing with really large files, like files that are over 512 megabytes, you can't just read them in with a typical fs.readfile sync, right? You actually need to read them in in chunks and process them in chunks or else your node application could crash due to not having enough memory, etc. So if the term stream or buffer is something that you've seen in node, but you actually haven't really seen a real life use case for, stick around in this video because I'm going to show you it. But before I dive into the actual real life use case, I'm going to show you, be sure to click that like button because it helps my channel grow. And also be sure to click that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this in the future. All right, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And again, I don't really have, um, this is just like one use case, but there's probably a lot of other use cases for using streams and buffers. So the best use case I could kind of show you, there's there's kind of two aspects to streams, right? You can do something called a write stream and you could do something called a read stream. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you what happens if you try to write out a ton of data to a CSV file, right? So I have a loop here that basically just loops through one to e to the eight, what is that? Is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Is that like a billion? So that's a hundred million. One e to the eight is a hundred million. So I try to write out a CSV with one to the E rows, right? So that's a lot of data. It ends up this, this is like a gig worth of um, data. I can kind of show you that if I do a du type in H, I can show you I have an output file here called out CSV, which is about a gig worth of data. So this is a pretty big file. And I want to show you a use case to why you want to use streams to write this file. So if I run this, I'm going to say node write slow. Um, what you're going to notice is after about a minute or so, this application is actually going to crash because it runs out of memory. And the reason this runs out of memory is because it's trying to create 100 million strings and put them in an, ar an array called data, right? So Node is going to kind of keep tacking that onto its memory. And at some point, Node's going to run out of memory. And you can kind of tweak Node to allow it to you know, do this and maybe not crash. Um, but also there's an issue here. There's only so much data you can push into this write file sync as well. So it could be crashing here. I just wanted to show you that, like this is a real life use case. Let's say you need to create a CSV file with a ton of data. You can't really do it this way because your node app is not going to be able to handle it. So you see here the app crashed. You go up here, it says reached heap limit, blah, 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 JavaScript out of memory. So this is the issue. When you start dealing with really large files, you can't just read it in with a read file sync or write file sync, et cetera. You have to kind of change your process. You have to change the way you're doing it. So this is why you need to do something called a write stream. So if I open up this file called write streams, I have an example of how this is done. So basically what's happening is we are gonna create something called a write stream to this out.csv file. And kind of the same approach as the other file, we just loop through 100 million records. But now what we do is we just write this kind of string to the write stream. Okay, so this is kind of going to be converted to a buffer behind the scenes and pushed into a write stream buffer. Um, and behind the scenes, Node has like a buffer that's filling up as you're writing this information. And it's going to hit a certain point where you've put too much stuff in the buffer, right? It's, I believe it's called like a high watermark or something. So I don't really know all the nitty gritties about streams, but I think what happens here is when you create a write stream behind the scenes, there's like a buffer that node is using. And as you keep writing strings to that buffer, that buffer is going to fill up. And at a certain point, there's enough data written in that buffer that the node runtime is going to say, okay, I need to take this chunk and I need to actually write it to my file. Okay. And there's something here over, over here when the buffer fills up called a high watermark. And when it reaches that point, Node is basically going to kick off the write and push that data to the file. Now, the reason Node, Node does this is because file IOs are really slow and you don't want to write data constantly to the disk. You want to wait until you have a good chunk of data and then Node's going to write that to the disk. So you have this whole like high watermark um, thing implemented with a buffer. So the issue with this code, though, is that if you just keep pushing data into that buffer, the buffer ends up just filling up and using up all the memory on your computer, right? So you need to actually tell this program, hey, wait until you have um, reached your over watermark flag. So when you do a write call like this, this will potentially be true or false. If it's true, that means you need to wait until node flushes the buffer and basically writes all that to the file. So if you hover over this, it says returns true if the internal buffer is less than the high watermark. Okay, so if this is true, that means you can keep on writing data. If it's false, that means you need to wait 
and you need to wait until the stream emits an event called drain. Okay. So I know this would be kind of confusing. We're kind of learning about like event emitters as well, but typically in Node or JavaScript, there's something called events, and you can do something called an event emitter where you can just event em emit events that other pieces of your application kind of kind of listen for. So we're basically saying just listen for the drain event to fire, and when it's done we can basically no longer have to pause. Okay, so this is just like a pause logic that says if watermark is false, we need to pause, wait for that buffer to be flushed, it's gonna get reset back to zero, and then we can keep on writing data to it. So if I run this, it, it'll take a while, but it actually writes all that data out to that out.csv, as I showed you earlier, which has about a gig worth of CF, CSV data. So that's basically an overview, I know it's a really quick bad overview of what a write stream is. Sometimes you want to use this in Node when you're dealing with large files. And I just wanted to kind of give you that overview so you understand like the purpose of it. So in the CSV, what we're doing is we're writing a bunch of like indexes that are incrementing. And then also we have a comma and a one. So hopefully you understand what a CSV file is. It's just like a file that has a bunch of rows in it. And then it has data in columns. Now the program that I wrote is I wanted to try to read in that CSV and just sum up the second column, right? So if I go to read slow, let me show you this. This is like an implementation of how you typically do it in Node if you're a beginner. You read through this, you'll notice that we are doing a read file sync on this file, and we are splitting up the lines by new line characters, and then we're trimming out the new lines. We're taking off the header of the CSV because we don't care about that. And then we just basically sum up all of that, those ones that I talked about, and this should print out 10 or 100 million if we did the sum calculation correctly. So let me show you, if I try to run this, you'll notice that the application just crashes, right? And you get an error saying cannot create a string longer than whatever this is characters. So again, you've reached a limitation in Node where Node can't read in this file because it's too big. So you cannot do this approach. And then secondly, this approach is actually kind of slow. It's not really performant. Just reading in all that data into memory at once. What you need to do instead is use something called a read stream. So let me show you some other code over here called read streams. And let's just read through this. This is actually kind of more complicated when you're dealing with strings. When you're dealing with read streams, you typically have to write code that is going to parse through your data and not crash because the data comes in a chunks, right? You don't know where in the CSV file it's going to like clip it. So you have to actually write some additional logic to like concatenate incomplete incomplete records together. So let me just kind of walk you through this. I don't know if this is going to be a good um, overview, but so a better solution from the read slow file is we are doing a create read stream, which is going to create a read stream on that file here. Remember, this file is like a gig worth of memory or gig worth of data. And then basically, I'm just going to create a sum a variable to count and increment the sum as we read through that each row in the CSV. And so read stream again implements an event emitter. So I can say dot on data. And behind the scenes node is it going to keep on reading in that file and giving you chunks of data, right? So you might have a gig worth of data in the file, but when you read it, you're going to get a chunk maybe of like, I don't know, 100 megabytes or 50 megabytes. You can actually change that up here by passing a second argument. But once you get that chunk, what I had to do is I'm basically taking that chunk, which is going to be a buffer, and I'm converting that buffer to a string which you'll see here, chunk string. And then we loop over the chunk string and we have to do some like lower level logic in JavaScript to kind of look through it to figure out where the new line characters are. And when we found a new line character, that means we found a line. And then we have to kind of split that line up to find um, the first comma. And once we find the first comma, we can kind of take that second value out. Remember there's like a one that I'm pinning into all the rows. So we get the one out and we convert it to a, um, a float, right? And then we just basically sum it up and we kind of keep doing this logic over and over as we loop through the CSV. And at some point, the CSV is going to be chunked up in a way that you don't have a full complete row. So we had to do like this unprocessed array up here and just keep track of like any line that wasn't fully um, ending with a slash new line character, which we kind of do down here. But all in all, I just wanted to show you that there's like a something called a stream and a buffer that you can use to kind of process this file. So let's just go ahead and run this real quick. And I'll show you in about 10 seconds, it's actually able to run through that gig worth of CSV data and print out a, a sum of 100 million, I believe. All right, so it took about 10 seconds or so, but now you see it printed out the sum. It basically looped through the file. It summed up the second column of that CSV and it ends up being 100 million because that's the amount of rows that we kind of outputted 
to that CSV file. So some of the main issues I ran into with this project is like figuring out this logic here can be kind of convoluted and complex because again, like the data you're getting in is chunked up in arbitrary pieces. So you don't know if the string that you got here is actually a full row in a CSV or not. And sometimes it's not. So you have to like keep track of where in the data this stuff go wrong, where is it split, and then kind of keep track of that and append it later on. So when you're dealing with stream, streams, stuff can get kind of complicated. That's why um, it's probably better not to deal with these unless you really need performance or you have to do them because your files are too big. But yeah, I don't know if this overview is good at all. It's probably super confusing, but if you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe if you want more videos like this in the future. That should hopefully help you become a better web developer. And also leave me a comment below if you've used read streams or write streams in your day to day. I know they're used a lot more in like dealing with network requests. If you're trying to write like a HTTP library or like trying to build your own express library, you might have to use streams for dealing with network requests or processing files that are sent over the network. But yeah, let me know. I'm interested. Have a good day and happy coding.